Here we go. On this day 77 and 78, um, we have all of this going on. And um, we did launch a rocket into space, so that's good. But it seems that uh, I've done videos on where people, you know, we can't talk to each other because of politics. And you know, if you don't agree with me, then, you know, some say that you're evil, racist, sexist, homophobe, fascist, or something like that. And then, you know, say people on the right will say, well, you left us a bunch of socialist, douchebag, whiny soy boys. And so there's this, already it's out there. We can't talk to each other. Um, and we're seeing that now is that, and it's not just one racial group doing this. It's everybody's doing this. And even here you see here up in the corner says Van Jones, most well-intentioned white person has virus in brain. Okay, that's not helping. Then USA is a failed social experiment by Cor Colonel West. No, it's not. There's blame to be put on all sides here. For instance, the cops do essentially doubled down on the on the people by that one cop killing George Floyd. Okay, well, guess what? Protesters started going out there. Then they tripled down on the police and the state government in Minnesota, in Minneapolis city proper. Start burning stuff down, destroying things, hurting people. So what did the police do? They quadrupled down. And as we see last night when uh, there were some police walking through some neighborhoods, I think in Minnesota, and uh, they were yelling at these people, get back in your house. And they didn't because they're on their private property. They don't have to. And so one police walks up to this other guy and goes, light him up. And so he shot him with these um, pepper balls. And the lady goes in the house. She's like, ah, damn, that hurt. What the hell? We're there. Um, and especially when you have police getting knocked the hell out because they swiped this guy's phone away from him. I don't have to show the videos, but you, you can find them yourself if you've not already seen them. So here is where we're at. We're at a pre-Civil War stage right now. And it's not even a Civil War that's against really the government per se. Because like I said a couple days ago in another video, People are going to start attacking each other, and we saw that last night, where just people will just go up there and knock the hell out of somebody for no reason other than they're, they're right there. And yes, they are attacking the police and the state, if you will. They're yelling at them, you know, saying cr crazy things. And um, there are people out there who are trying to instigate this more and create more strife and more pain. They're they're trying to set the set the fire. Because the fire is already blazing right now. Now what they want to do is they want to pour more gas on the ground so the fire will catch it and then create more carnage, more fire, more violence, more animosity, more strife, more economic downturn that we're already seeing right now. And so what do you expect when you quadruple down on the government? What do you think the government's going to do? They're going to five times down on your ass. Quintupling? Yeah. Yeah. They're going to quintuple down on your ass. And then what's going to happen? They're going to sextuple down on, on the government. You see what I'm going here? It's like it's it's snowballing. It's cascading. It's getting out of control. Now, how do we fix this? Well, one side's going to have to back down. Well, the police aren't going to back down. And guess what? The, the rioters who are people who are not even, don't even know who George Floyd is anymore. Don't even know why they're doing it. So, do you think they're going to back down? No. They ain't backing down. Why would they? Because they think they have the upper hand. Because every time the police back away and let them burn down, a, especially the third precinct the other night, every time they see that happening, they say, we got the upper hand, and they keep moving forward, and they keep pushing harder and harder and harder. And so what do the police do? They got to push back and meet with that force. So... This is, this is the tinderbox, and it's lit. And one side is going to have to back away a little bit. So Someone's going to have to step in and go, look, knock it off. All right? You go to your corner. You go to your corner. Let's have a parlay. Let's discuss this out. What can we do? Yes. You know what? Policing needs to be reformed, obviously. Because you see it every time on the news, 
on YouTube, First Amendment audits, etc. The police always violate rights. And what happens to them? Nothing. Okay, let's talk about the protesters. Well, stop burning down your community. You're making it worse for yourself in the long run. This does not help. You know who was at fault here? Derek Chauvin, the police officer who killed George Floyd. That's the problem. Him. And he's in jail right now. Okay? He's the one that, I wouldn't say caused it, but it was the spark. It was that Tunisian uh, fruit seller that set himself on fire that caused the Arab Spring. He was the catalyst. So, attacking a Wendy's, burning down an Arby's, looting a Target, that doesn't do anything. That just creates more problems. Those people who had jobs don't have jobs anymore because you burn down the goddamn fucking... Oh, it's insane. Your ire should be protesting peacefully to the police. And I mean that sincerely. Peaceful protests will win out. It may take longer... And it will take longer, but it eventually wins out. If you took a, take a look at Gandhi, for instance, he starved himself and the British, whatever, left India. Or whatever the hell happened. I need to look that up. But the point is, is that at first Gandhi was, was, was acting violent, but then he, was, and he pretty much figured out that, hey, you know, violence isn't going to work because guess who has all the guns in the force? The government. You're going to fight the government? Okay. Cool. Let me know when that if, that if that ever works in the long run. Because even if you do win, who takes over? There's that saying, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Something like that. Meaning that, yeah, you think our government's bad and you want to change? Cool. But if you get a violent overthrow, okay, and you get some guy in there that's going to be worse. Very rarely is it when a revolution ends that it goes back to normal and you get a nice nice new leader out there who's benevolent and wants to help out. No, it never happens that way. Because once a violent revolution takes hand and takes over and they win or whatever, the guy that comes in is going to be like, okay, great. Uh, who was the enemy during this time we were fighting? Oh, okay, all these people. Guillotine, a la, you know, 1789, 1790-ish, you know, the reign of terror in uh, France. They were having a peaceful revolution, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and it turned into, it got nuts. They even, you know, it got so bad that they were, the people, <laughs> you couldn't trust anyone. And they were just hacking people to death, you know. Guillotine, oh, he, he made a, he made a bad comment. Guillotine. You know, he said he said the wrong word, guillotine. That's not going to work. And it, and what, what happened? Well, you got Napoleon <laughs> eventually, and then everyone was like, "Ah, this guy's good." And then he started attacking every all of Europe, and it didn't work out. Eventually, it worked out, but not after how many deaths? How many millions of deaths? I mean, I, I so again, the two court, the two sides need to get separated people need to like like I said a parlay find out what concessions can both sides make okay how about you stop burning down Wendy's okay police how about you stop violating people's rights change your police and your standing operating procedures you know um stop racial profiling I guess uh go to the protest or stop beating the crap out of people who have nothing to do with it start burning down burning down black owned businesses um you know, oh, by the way, there's still a pandemic going on, but I guess that went out of the, went out the fricking window, of course. So here we are. What do we do? I don't know. I'm not in charge. Just some guy, you know, with a voice talking to the internet. So what do you do? I don't know. I'm not in a position to actually institute or <laughs> massage any sort of change right now. It, I just don't have the you know, benefits, I guess, or the, or the the clout to do it. It's going to be, have to be the people and the government going to have to get together and figure out how to fix this. That's the only way. And I guess, you know, if that doesn't happen, we sit at an impasse. Mm, then what? 
more of this. This isn't going to work in the long run. Because I think what, what Trump said was that once the looting starts, the shooting starts. And that's we're seeing that now. Because there's a lot of business owners out there in red states that are heavily armed that aren't going to put up with crap like this. So if you break into someone's home or business and you intend to loot it and steal from it, you're going to die. Basically, don't loot. And you won't have to put somebody in a position to where they have to think about either ending your life or letting you take whatever, the flat screen. So I guess when this is all said and done, we'll see what happens. But I don't see this ending anytime soon unless cooler heads prevail. <laughs>